myself up here. Here we go. All right. My name is Steve Shannon. I'm going to talk a little bit about my awesome research, depending on who you ask. Um, it's uh, the name of our group is the Fourth State Applications Research Lab, or we call it, we nickname it Four Star. We specialize in plasma science for an array of applications, everywhere from fusion technology to uh, industrial and biological applications. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my focus area, and Professor Stapleman is going to talk. Um, shortly after about, about her focus area in plasmas for life sciences. This is actually a plasma reactor that was designed by some undergraduates a few years ago as part of the senior design team. It was a portable plasma source that you could take to elementary schools for science days so we could teach kids plasma physics. So those are actual little eight-year-old hands uh, playing with a high-power RF device. So a quick overview of the plasma work we have going on over, over here. We have three primary faculty, Dr. Borum, Dr. Stapleman, and myself, um, kind of crossing over into a lot of different plasma areas, spanning from fusion energy technology, which is the traditional nuclear, nuclear engineering plasma application, and also working in industrial applications, biological applications, et cetera. Right now, we got a pretty good group, 14 grad students, four undergraduate researchers, and looking to grow. We couldn't crop all the beer bottles out, but we were able to get rid of the ones the students were holding. But this is a picture of some of us at an international conference last fall um, out in Pittsburgh. So we have a few, uh, we have a, we have a few, we have a, our, our, our efforts are actually pretty international and we, we have collaborations with groups in, in the UK and France and Germany, Egypt, Korea, Japan, as well as the United States. We have an active uh, bi-weekly uh, plasma research seminar that we, we actually have it over in the conference room um, every, th every other Thursday morning. So any of you are interested in some of the current research going on in plasmas, you're definitely invited to attend. We can send information out to the grad students later on that. Um, but definitely there's an opportunity. It's definitely a, a global research effort. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of collaborators all over the world. A uh, couple of the, some of the applications we work with. Uh, I'm just going to go through these really quickly. We do some fusion research in collaboration with Oak Ridge. And what we really focus on with our work at Oak Ridge is, is working on auxiliary heating systems for tokamak reactors. In, in particular, um, ion cyclotron range of frequency heating, and we are developing diagnostics to probe the plasmas in front of these antennas because these antennas will dump a tremendous amount of power into the plasma and can actually damage the fusion reactor if not properly modeled or, 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 or operated. In fact, the plasma fusion device over at Princeton, NSTX, blew a hole in its center stock because some of the RF energy that was going through the plasma diverted into the center stock and melted a hole in it. So having a better idea how these operate is definitely a more economic way to run your lab. So one of the diagnostics we've been developing is a pump probe uh, laser diagnostic system to estimate the density of the plasma in front of these antennas. And this is just highlighting some of the results in comparison to other diagnostics that one of our current graduate students, Abdullah Zafar, has come up with in his collaboration with Oak Ridge. A uh, big chunk of our research, though, focuses on plasma applications in industry. And what I highlight here are some, are very, very high resolution pictures of things you all have in your pocket right now. This is a NAND memory device that's being developed and is probably sitting in your phone or your iPad or your computer or whatever else. Um, this is, these, are, these are single memory cells that are being developed where you have to etch 10 nanometer diameter holes with 100 to 1 aspect ratio into complex film stacks. This is a cross-section um, scanning electron microscope picture of some 110 to 1 aspect ratio holes etched into silicon for memory devices. The smaller you can make these holes and the closer you can get them together, the more memory you can have in your computer and you need plasma processing in order to do this. The nuts and bolts of it I'm not going to cover in a few minutes, but I will say that we do play a role in this. The main thing that plasmas provide in these industrial applications is a combination of unique room temperature chemistries that you can't achieve through anything other than electron impact processes that you have in plasmas, and ion acceleration at the periphery of the plasma generated through something that's called a plasma sheath. The, basically, the combination of these reactive species and the ions give you a, literally a, a plasma drill that allows you to cut these large, high aspect ratio holes into different devices or different materials that you use for computer chip manufacturing. Now, our lab's role in all this is that we take these basic concepts of chemistry control, ion energy control, and plasma formation. We develop diagnostics and methodologies for extending this technology so that we can keep making better computer devices. We test them out in our reactors just that way about 50 yards in our lab. 
And so we, we test them out on research-friendly reactors, and eventually our technology winds up on industrial reactors like this Applied Materials Advantage Edge System, which is a shameless plug for my former employer, because that's where I was before I came here. Now, we not only do experiments, we also do a lot of simulation work. Uh, this is actually some work for those of you who aren't interested in plasmas. We actually started using a, platform, a, pl a simulation platform. So Corey over here in the middle, hey, Corey, um, is, is, is one of the students who's working on this. And we're actually taking the Moose framework, which was developed for uh, modeling nuclear reactor systems. And we're actually starting to use it for plasma simulations. We got a collaboration with the National Science Foundation and University of Illinois, where we've actually demonstrated, been, had some success doing plasma simulation work in the Moose framework. So taking something that was developed in Castle and now using it for plasmas is kind of fun. It allows us to talk to all the other people who don't do plasma stuff in our department. Um, so we've got three, we got, we got, we got uh, two students who are currently working on this in the collaboration with University of Illinois. I didn't know the noise was going to come on. I mean, this is our newest toy, and this is the one I'm going to wrap up with. Um, this is a plasma in a bag. This is uh, two high voltage uh, re uh, high voltage plates. This is a Ziploc bag. And we fill the Ziploc bag with some combination of gases that we can use for sterilization or treatment of whatever we want to put in the bag. We then expose this to a high frequency, high voltage waveform between the electrodes. And we can generate this nice uniform glow discharge between inside the bag between these plates. So think about if you had something that you needed to keep sterilized or you needed to treat that you then had to transport. By being able to run the process within the bag, we are not going to, we reduce the likelihood of cross-contamination and we've actually gotten, gotten a grant in collaboration with a local company through National Institute of Health in order to develop this technology for the sterilization of material for internal medicine. This is actually a video of the same process running but with powder in the bag that we're trying to treat and you can see that the plasma actually gets the, the, the powder, you can't see it, never mind, I'm going to skip that, but the powder dances around and it actually agitates the powder so we can conformally treat all the surfaces. So this is one of our current projects. So I know I'm talking fast. We got a lot of people we want to get through today. I guess the last thing I want to acknowledge, like we all should acknowledge, is where the is who's, who's who's helping to pay the bills. And one of the things I want to emphasize here is that actually we've got some pretty diverse funding funding in our group. We have everything from industry, Samsung, Tokyo Electron, Applied Materials, Plasma Therm, MKS, and we also get federal funding from National Science Foundation, Department of Energy, and NIH. So. We're kind of playing around. We pretty much anyone who wants to write a check, we're willing to do work for them, I suppose. <laughs> um, so with that, I think I finished up kind of quick. But uh, while we get ready for the next presentation, are there any questions?